Welcome to Understand the Math. In the video description, you'll find a link to guided notes that can be downloaded and filled in as you follow along with the video. In this video, I'm going to go over definitions used to describe an angle, explain how angles are classified and named, and complete some example problems on classifying angles. Let's begin by looking at the definition of an angle. An angle is formed by rotating a ray about its endpoint. A ray is a directed line segment consisting of a point on a line and all points extending in one direction from that point. Let's see how this works. Here we have a ray that will rotate like this. May we do that much rotation. And it'll end up in this final position. We'll name the angle formed by this rotation theta. The vertex of the angle is a common endpoint where two rays meet. Let's go ahead and let's label that. This is the vertex. The initial side of an angle is the starting position of the ray. We'll label that. And the terminal side of the angle is the final position of the ray. And we'll go ahead and label that. An angle is positive if the rotation of the ray is counterclockwise. This picture shows a positive angle because the rotation, which you can see right here, is counterclockwise. So let's label this picture. So this is a positive angle. So we can say that theta is greater than zero and it has a counterclockwise rotation. Likewise, we can say that an angle is negative. That's another definition we need to know. If the rotation of the ray is clockwise. And that's shown in this, this picture right here. This angle, theta, is less than zero, and we'll label this clockwise rotation. Now let's talk about the measure of an angle. So we'll highlight that, the measure of an angle is the amount of rotation needed to bring the initial side ray to coincide with the terminal side ray. So let's envision the initial side rotating to the terminal side, and we're going to call the amount of rotation angle theta. An angle is commonly measured in either degrees or in radians. Let's now talk about how we classify an angle. Angles are classified based on their measurements. There are five main classifications of angles. 
We'll call this first angle theta. And we're going to restrict theta to be between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Or if we think about that in terms of radian measure, we'll say that 0 is less than theta is less than pi over 2. And this type of angle is called an acute angle. The second angle, we are going to put a symbol that denotes a right angle. And for a right angle, our angle theta is equal to 90 degrees or pi over 2. And we don't normally typically write theta there. We just do the angle symbol for a right angle. So let's label this as a right angle. This next angle is an angle where the measure going from the initial to the terminal is 180 degrees or pi radians. And this angle is called a straight angle. That one's probably the easiest one to remember. Our fourth angle, we're going to notate as theta, and then we'll restrict theta to be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So in radian notation, we'll say that pi over 2 is less than theta is less than pi. And if we have an angle of those dimensions, then we say this angle is an obtuse angle. Our last angle, we're going to again label as theta. And for this angle, theta is restricted to be between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Or, in radian measure, we would say that pi is less than theta is less than 2 pi. And this angle is called a reflex angle. We're now going to talk about the different ways that an angle can be named. The angle symbol, notated like this, is often used to designate an angle. There are three common ways to label an angle. The first way is to use a single letter at the vertex. So if we look up at this picture, we see letter A is at the vertex, so we would label this angle Use the angle symbol like that, and then say it's angle A. The second way to label an angle is by using the letters from the rays forming the sides. Now we have to be careful with this. We have to start at one ray and go to the next way. So there's actually two ways we can do this. We can start at letter B. So we could say this is angle B, A, C. Or we can start at letter C and label it as angle C, A. What we can't do is just start at angle A. The third way to label an angle is by using a Greek letter. So if you look up at this picture, which is going to disappear here in just a second, look at the picture, and that is a Greek letter named theta. So we would say, to use a single Greek letter, we would say it is angle theta. Let's now briefly go over some of the Greek letters that are most commonly used in trigonometry. The first one we'll label as alpha. 
The second one we'll label as beta. The third one is gamma. The fourth one is the one that we just used, and this is the most common one to use in trigonometry, and this is called theta. And then the last one is called phi. That one I think is one of the hardest ones to remember. We'll end this video with some example problems. For these examples, we're asked to classify the angle as acute. Let's go ahead and let's underline that. I always encourage you to underline the parts of the ex problem that you're being asked to do. So we're going to label it as acute, right, obtuse, straight, or reflex. So for the first example problem, theta is given as 60 degrees. So the first thing you want to do is you want to say, okay, where is theta in terms of the angles that we just looked at in terms of zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and so forth. So we notice that theta is between zero degrees is less than 60 degrees is less than 90 degrees. So we can say that it is an acute angle. The second one, our angle is 225 degrees. So we say, okay, 20, 225 degrees is between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. So this one is a reflex angle. I always think that's the hardest one. The third one, angle ABC, is 135 degrees. So 135 degrees lies between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And because of that, this angle is called an obtuse angle. And then number four is 90 degrees. So we know right away that is a right angle. And the last one, beta, is 180 degrees. And so that means beta is a straight angle. I would encourage you to review the definitions we've gone over and then see if you can complete these examples on your own. Mathematician Paul Hamos once said, the only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. If this video has been helpful to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. Keep believing in yourself and have a great rest of your day.